This conference will now be recorded. So once again, we'll be uh, working on something known as uh, TensorFlow Kira's API, where we'll be exploring normalization on the data sets along with uh, creating a deep learning model. We're gonna write an ANN, but we're gonna understand uh, what is meant by normalization on the data sets. So you're gonna use this uh, cover type data set, right? It is uh, an open source uh, donated data set, right? Uh, these are the uh, donors for the database, right? So the people who actually uh, generated the data set. So uh, this can be downloaded from your Kaggle.com. Uh, so I'll sh I'll share this link over the chat as well as uh, I'll share this link within the programs which will develop. So reviewing this data set, right? So the data set is going to have these 54 attributes. The last attribute is going to be the type of forest, right? And the other attributes are the features which are going to tell us that what is uh, the particular class of the forest, right? So guys, uh, I hope this is clear what we have to do. Anyone facing any challenge can raise the query. So to begin with, let us write this new Python file, session number 57. So last time we did image classification and this is where you're going to solve a, a basic classification problem, not the image classification problem guys, right? So the first thing first is that I'm gonna say import Pandas as PD, right? So you're gonna uh, import pandas so that you can read the data sets. I'm gonna say data frame is your pandas dot read the CSV file. So it is named as coke type dot CSV, right? So let us print the data frame. Now this data frame is uh, very huge, right? So let us just wait for a couple of minutes here. So you got this uh, 581012 rows into 55 columns. So this uh, cover type is something which is the classification result. We need to uh, use these attributes and we need to somehow at the end of the detail that okay, the forest uh, with these attributes is going to have this particular type, right? Now uh, data set can be any data set of your field of your interest but yes so i've just chosen this uh, data set so that i can teach you what is normalization on the data sets so we'll proceed accordingly right so we'll uh, extract features from the data set so in order to extract the features from the data set i'm going to say it as x which is going to be your uh, data frame of data frame of uh, uh, let's say columns data frame dot columns so guys i'm going to uh, get the columns from 0 till 54. so when i say 0 to 54 so it's like 0 to 53 right so remember uh, the concept of slicing here so 0 column 54 here means uh, it's gonna be less than 54 and uh, the target variable for us right so who is the target variable so target variable so that's like uh, classes so i'm gonna say y is data frame dot so you can directly use uh, this column name that's like cover underscore type so whatever the way you are more comfortable you can uh, use that guys right so X and uh, Y we got uh, as two of the things, right? Now the next thing is we're gonna divide our uh, data set over here into testing and training. So I'm uh, very uh, easily gonna come up here, right? If you see uh, last time you had this passion uh, data set dot load data. So you are using this built in data set and uh, loading the data automatically gave you the testing data and the training data but uh, we do have something known as 
uh, from sklearn if you have your own data set then it's uh, something which you have to take as a call dot model selection you going to import train test split so we were, we are not going to learn uh, machine learning uh, we are going to actually work on deep learning today but of course to train test split it's going to be your sklearn learn coming into the picture so it means that even if you are going to work on tensorflow or the kiras you should always be uh, having a command on your sklearn learn uh, apis at the same time so let us split the data So I'm gonna say X train, then let's say X test, comma, we have Y train and Y test. So you can say train test split. You split this X and the Y. Let's have the uh, train size. We'll choose the 70% of the data because we have a lot of data, right? If you see, uh, you have a lot of records here. So approximately uh, 5 lakh records here, right? So it means uh, we can take a call. So I have uh, uh, divided the data into 70% and 30%, right? So you can anytime choose a random state. So let's say the random state is some number 90, right? So why I'm choosing the random state to be some number here? So that any time if you rerun your program, so it should use the same uh, randomness in your program in in your samples. Now till here, I think uh, this is not a big time challenge for us, right? So we got this X and uh, Y coming up for us, the training and the testing and the splitting. So next is we're gonna create the ANN model. So you need to create ANN model. So when I'm going to create an ANN model, so I need to uh, always understand that the model will have some layers, right? So we already uh, have seen this part for our discussion. So we're gonna have an input layer, a hidden layer, and an output layer. So creating an ANN means uh, that you're gonna have these uh, layers. So just give me a moment. So you have an input layer. So Kira's dot uh, layers right over here, and uh, what we gonna have is this guy called Kira's to be imported. So you see from your TensorFlow import Kira's. So we got the first layer input layer as the flatten layer. Now this flatten layer uh, for me, right? Uh, I'm not gonna use today the flatten layer, right? Rather, I'm gonna use my first layer itself as a dense layer, right? So we are not going to choose uh, the data to be flattened. So we are going to have uh, all the three layers: input layer, hidden layer, and output layer as dense layer. Now in this my input layer, I'm going to choose 64 neurons. Right, so there, there is uh, uh, 64 nodes in my first network. Then uh, the input shape for my data set here. So this is your X underscore train, right? So I got this uh, input shape for me. So it is uh, the shape for this fellow. So whatever is the shape of this guy take one and uh, put a comma here right so this is going to be uh, the shape so guys if you'll print down this shape of one it's gonna give you 54 right so the number of uh, uh, features available in your training data sets right so that's how we are going to come up and uh, put the shape so shape is the number of features in your training data set now flatten uh, was the layer available in Kira's API where you do not to work on activation functions but here you need to work on activation functions so I'm going to choose uh, the activation function right so let us come here and say import tensorflow as pf so you got this same activation function rectified linear unit coming up here right so in my input layer, I got 64 neurons who's gonna work uh, to process this data set, right? 
So uh, we're gonna have this activation function as ReLU. Then uh, we got an input shape defined here that what is the shape for my data set to work with. Then we got a hidden layer where again you have the same uh, concept and we lastly have an output layer. We have this guy as uh, softmax function in the end, right? So why softmax? Because this guy is going to give me probabilities. But this time uh, uh, I'm going to choose the size as eight since we have eight classes to be predicted, right? Eight classes to be predicted. So this is one a very a typical ANN model which you will be using in your uh, projects or in your day to day routines, right? How you're going to work on uh, what? So once you create the model, right? So this model is created. We need to compile the model. So that's like additional step. So compiling uh, is exactly same. So you're going to choose uh, what is the optimizer for your model? So how better the results can be achieved by the model? So there is an algorithm with the atom. Then there will be loss calculations and the accuracy calculations for your model, right? So this is how you say model dot compile. So you got this loss and you got this metrics, right? So this is the same thing as we discussed in our last session. So thereafter, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come here and say your model dot fit. So when I will fit, I have this X train, and uh, we got something known as your Y train. So you give the training the data to your model, right? And whenever you are going to give the training data, so you can always uh, work with the uh, epochs. So when we are working on epochs, so these are the iterations. How many iterations would you like to uh, make? So I'm going to choose the iterations as five, right? This may be, uh, you know, kind of a lot of results are to be evaluated. So in order to present, in order to present it, I'm just going to make the epochs to go as three. Okay, so let's have it for the presentation part. Along with, I'm going to say that there is some batch size, which is, uh, let's say, 60. So that's a 60 means since you have uh, nearly 5 lakh records, right? So uh, what we'll do is we'll pick up 60 records uh, and we'll keep on, uh, you know, training the model. So that, that's how it's going to work for us. Now, anytime when you are going to fit the model, so this is known as training the model. Now we are training in three iterations. So you need to understand here. So we are training in three iterations so every iteration will have some results right so we are iterating if you see epochs as three so there will be three iterations and we're going to train the model and uh, we need to know what happened in each iteration right so that's the reason you got this guy called history so what is history, right? So history uh, will contain information about loss and accuracy details over each epoch. Can I get a smiley from all of you here, guys? Are we clear till here? Whatever we have coded so far, is this part clear? Or we have any query, you can please uh, raise the same. An acknowledgement varied from all of you. So, guys, we are not doing anything which is difficult or uh, different from what we have done previously, right? So in our previous discussion, what we did was uh, we worked on some built in data set. So this built in data set for us, right? We uh, just exploded and we did see what is it. So today we have our own data set as a CSV file. 
So we're trying to work on classification problem, not a regression problem, right? We started with the classification problems on TensorFlow, and uh, this is how we are going to work on it. And uh, history for us is important so that we understand that what happened in each and every step, right? So that's how we are going to work on it. So uh, other than this, we already uh, have this way of evaluating uh, the losses and the accuracy, the overall loss and the accuracy with this model dot evaluate function. So let us use the same. So coming here, uh, I'm going to say check for losses and accuracy of the model, right? So overall. So we're going to come up here and put the uh, this guy called. X test. And the Y test, right? So previously it was uh, the images and the labels. So this is how we uh, have the data. So we are just going to come up and say print me history dot history. And uh, history dot history is a dictionary. So I'm going to print the keys for the dictionary as well, right? So I'll just say print. This is your history. For the model. And here we're going to work on uh, uh, overall. Metrics. Right, so what is uh, the overall loss and what is the overall accuracy for your model? So this is how we uh, try to train the model and uh, see what kind of uh, result you will get right so i'll just try to run this program and now let's see uh, what happens here now this execution on your system may take more time depending upon what kind of configuration your laptop is and a uh, few other details. So I will always encourage you guys in case you have a challenge with the TensorFlow on your system, maybe installation or uh, maybe executions. So you can anytime work on the Google Colabs. So you understand as of now we are flowing into the accuracy of 64%, right? If you can see uh, 64, 65, now with every training uh, uh, part here, the accuracy is somehow getting increased, right? So we are now able to achieve 67% uh, percent of the accuracy. So epochs, they are three. There are three, three uh, iterations through which we are training the model. Now we have reached up to the 70% accuracy. All right, so overall accuracy is 70% uh, with a loss of uh, uh, 0.7, right? So it's pretty much good, right? That accuracy score is 70%. And uh, guys, okay, so we, uh, did we get the history printed for me? So just give me a moment here. Yes, so here we are with the history, right? So there, there is dictionary keys, loss and accuracy. Now if you see for three epochs, so you got three losses and you got three accuracies. Can I get a smile here from everyone? So I'm printing this history. So it means the moment you say model dot fit, you get a history object in the return. Your history object is nothing. It's going to have a dictionary of key value pairs. So there is a dictionary uh, where loss is the key. Value is a list of losses over three epochs. And same way accuracy over three epochs, right? When I was iterating for the first time, my accuracy was 58%. When I uh, went for the second time, it was 65. Then lastly, it was 66. So I hope uh, this is clear to everyone, guys. Right. So the overall uh, uh, structure for creating an in and model is clear to everyone.
All right. So we got three folks, right? And uh, okay, so we have a query here. So how do we define uh, a loss in this case? So typically, uh, Shimpa here, when we are talking about the loss, right? So loss is one another a parameter, right? Which is a kind of an entropy for us. So where you can say uh, the attributes which were non-important for us, and uh, let's say uh, due to uh, uh, some of the data set, right, available in your uh, CSV file here and there. So non-meaningful information has been uh, uh, there, right? So it's not always that you have the meaningful information. So there will be a loss for non-meaningful information for us. That is what we're trying to work on here. Now, guys, I am going to use this matplotlib here somehow. So I'll say import matplotlib.pyplot as plot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print uh, the accuracy. I'm going to plot the accuracy on the graph, right? So how I'm going to do that. So I know that we have three folks, right? So we got a box, which is a list. We got uh, one, two, and three, right? So there were three folks. So if you want, you can uh, take it as in uh, zero, one, and two. So it's up to you. So literally, what we have is we have this uh, accuracy coming up for us. So this accuracy is a list for us, right? So I'm going to say accuracy over epochs, which is going to be your uh, history dot history. Now it's it's a dictionary. So I'm going to just uh, get this key called accuracy. So I'll get the another list. Right, so I'll get this uh, another list here over the epochs. So epoch zero, epoch one, epoch two, right? So you can plot this uh, uh, graph and you can see uh, how you uh, actually uh, perform while kind of training your model, right? So I'm gonna say plot dot plot. So you can say x label is epochs and y label is your accuracy over epochs, right? So how did the accuracy went? So obviously it is going linearly. It is going uh, in upscale manner. But of course, yes, we'll just uh, put a few more things here and there. So let's say plot dot x table is your epochs. And uh, y label is going to be your accuracy. Then uh, moving ahead. We'll just put this plot dot show. So I'm just plotting this uh, small graph here in the visualization format so that we can understand uh, what is what, right? So let's try to run the program here. Now the only problem which you will be seeing is that any time when you will execute your program, right? It's gonna train the model every time. So we, we get the training of the model coming up every time. And uh, we even have these accuracy scores available. In history for every iteration which it is performing. So you can have a large. Okay. So it assumes that the law even trade loss parameter is increasing and the parameter increases.
So guys, uh, here we are with the graph, right? So you can see uh, how with the epochs, right? The accuracy is uh, increasing for us. So can I get a smiley from all of you? I hope this part of our discussion is uh, clear to all of us. Now, if you want to make the predictions, right? If you want to uh, check for how the predictions will work, right? For your model. So guys, uh, coming here. Making predictions. So we are going to come up and create a probability model, right? So you're going to have a probability model, which is going to be your TensorFlow dot Kiras. So did we this we did last time as well? Sequential. Now here we are going to create this model. So we take our own model as input, and then we are going to use TensorFlow dot Kiras dot layers dot softmax as the other part. So we create a probability model here, right? Which is going to give us the predictions. So I'm going to say predictions are your probability model dot predict. And you are going to uh, predict on your X test, right? So you give the testing data as uh, input here and uh, this guy should be passed as a as a list here. So you get the predictions here, right? And uh, if you wanna uh, now come up and print the predictions, so you can say print me predictions. So printing the predictions, you are going to get uh, all the probabilities for all the predictions, right? So I'm just printing only prediction at zero because X test means that there will be a lot of records, right? So somewhere around 30% of 80,000 records. So I'm just taking the prediction of zero, and thereafter I'll uh, use your numpy dot. So I'll even import the numpy. Import numpy as np. So np dot uh, arg max. Guys, this is the same story which we have uh, discussed earlier as well, right? So we are going to uh, print this np dot r max with the predictions of zero, so that you can understand what is the class of forest, right? So class of forest, and here you will get a list of probabilities. The same story uh, which we already discussed, guys. Can I get a smile once again? The prediction model is clear to everyone. So Shashi, when we are working on our uh, output layer, the output layer is going to have an activation function called softmax. We always work with the softmax because it yields the probabilities for the different classes. So this is something which we uh, did by discussing our activation function session. Good to go here, Shashi. So the output layer is softmax. So it's gonna give us the probabilities uh, activation function softmax will give you the probabilities for the different classes. So we will have different probabilities out of those probabilities whatsoever the probability will be maximum. We are going to pick up that to determine the class of forest. So let us try to run this program once again. So what we did we instead of working on some built-in data set we explored our own data set we use the pandas to read a csv file and uh, do some job right so uh lastly when you will reach up here when you are able to you know kind of understand everything for your fkc or for your prediction of the classes thereafter we'll work on normalization on the data set but first of all, let us finish this iteration.
All right, so here we go. Here we are, right, guys? So what we uh, get is these uh, list of probabilities uh, coming for us, right? Then uh, that what can be uh, what, right? And uh, we got this first index as the highest index. So that is how we can use this model to do the predictions uh, at the same time for us. Now, you may have any type of data set and you can work in any of the ways. So what I have is, I have this one more data set available for you. So I got this seeds.csv which I will be uploading. All right. So guys, I'm not uploading uh, uh, this data set because it's a larger file. So instead of this, I just put a reference here. So, so give you these uh, two links. What I did say. So I've just use the demo data right now we have this seeds.csv now for a particular seed so b seed right so there, there is a particular wheat seed and this guy is going to have features x1 till x7 right and we are going to come up and uh, predict the class for that seed right whether it is one or two or three so there are these uh, three classes right on the data set so you're going to write the same program on the seeds.csv. So this will be your assignment, right? So, but as of now, our program is not finished, okay? So as a part of your assignment, write the same program with a different data set, all right? So guys, our classifications, they are not going to be your SK learn classifications in your project work, they are going to be deep learning classifications in your project work, right? So this is one very basic way that how you're gonna work on uh, the things, right? But of course, yes, we are going to work more, right? This is not just the uh, part of your uh, ANN or today's session. Tomorrow, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how we can create our own neural network and we'll either take this uh, data set or its server or the seeds data set to create and train our own model, right? So we are taking the help of Kiras today, but tomorrow I'm gonna take down the help of NumPy or maybe some other helper libraries and we'll be writing our own artificial neural network, right? So that, that's how we're gonna work uh, tomorrow, right? But anyways, now, right, so today, uh, once we understood this session number 57, so this was uh, where we uh, uh, used the same previous approach and uh, we uh, came up with our solutions. So let's come to the presentation now. So in the artificial neural network, we have something known as normalization as an approach where we are going to uh, work on the data set, right? So, uh, here, what is meant by normalization? We eliminate the units of measurements for the data. So what I'm trying to say that there may be, uh, uh, we're going to have these, let's say, two features. One feature is age, and uh, the other feature is uh, uh, the average salary uh, person will uh, have over a year package for that person, right? So let's say uh, a 20 uh, year engineer, let's say, is gonna have a package of 3.5 lakhs. Then uh, there may be uh, another uh, uh, 30 years engineer, let's say, is having uh, 12 lakhs. Let's say 40 years engineer is having uh, 24 lakhs. So what we see is a very small number as compared to the package, which is a very large age now, and it is Right. So the day going to uh, and let's say you some prediction regression classification, right? 
normalization or standardization on data is required so that we can have an easy compute on the uh, on the data right rather than uh, uh, working on such large numbers now how we actually normalize uh, the data set so typically we either do a rescaling or we do a standardization let us see one by one what is meant by that now rescaling the data means that if you have some uh, features right and you want to convert the data in the range of 0 to 1 you use and apply one mathematical formula to do so so uh, there may be a value x which you would like to transform in the range of 0 to 1 so you use your x minus x minimum over x max minus x minimum and you get a new value for your feature x which is going to be between 0 to 1. So either you rescale the data between 0 to 1, right? So we don't want the figures in the lakhs, right? 3 lakh, 5 lakhs, 7 lakh, 11 lakh, 12 lakhs, 24 lakhs. We rescale the data between 0 to 1. Why so? Because analyzing the data sets, working mathematically on them, it's going to be very easy. The other way is that we use standardization. Now, this is uh, a kind of followed more in the industrial approach, right? So there is some as a Z score, we call it as a standardization. So Z score we call is your X minus X data point X over X. So data point, right? A one two X N. Then X bar is going to be sampling and S is going to be standard deviation. Sample mean will be your standard deviation. So these scores statistics are right. So we want to standardize the having some values. Uh, computer data to find the probabilities even in a much more uh, better and an optimal approach using some standardization techniques. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually work on the same standardization pattern. We'll use uh, SKLearn pre-processing the data set and we'll standardize our data set first. That means you normalize your data set, standardize your data set, and then you train the model. And thereafter, we're going to observe what is the difference between accuracy, right? So whether the accuracy goes up or it is the same or it's going to come down for us. So uh, normalization and standardizations are very much common terms when it comes to pre-process your data set. Generally, normalization where you rescale the data between 0 to 1 and standardization where you're going to take a standard deviation, right? So you're going to have a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. So we're going to have a z-score and we're going to standardize the data. Now, in case you would like to know on standardization, you can just try to Google and see more. This is just an introduction for you. So statistical terms. So people. So we are going to code uh, the same uh, the, and see how the data set, right? Let's see uh, how we can proceed with it over the organization. So I'm just new Python now. So there is a small difference when we have to come up and uh, train our data set now. Okay, so what is that difference? So previously uh, we were taking uh, all uh, these uh, uh, features, right? But all these features for us over here. Let me open this. So I think uh, these features, the highlighted features here, guys. These are like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the first 10 features, they are not kind of normalized or standardized between 1 to 0, right? So everything else is 1 and 0 only. And the last one is also the class. That's okay. That's the prediction for us. So we would like to uh, have all the features. But out of all the features, these first 10 features who have these uh, different uh, values, they are supposed to be either standardized or normalized. Can I get a smiley? Now, pre-processing the data 
set means that you have to be a bit more uh, you know cautious over your data set you need to analyze it that what you are going to pre process what you are not going to pre process so let's come here 57a so what i will do now is i'm going to take all the columns so this we are going to come up and work on uh, data pre processing standardization on data set and later training the model so this is what we would like to come up and achieve guys right so uh, let us come here and take all the columns right extract all features from your data set first of all so that's like 0 to 54 so uh, we are not going to have this uh, one set of feature we got all the features first of all right so 0 to uh, 55 we had all the features so why is same for us target variable is always uh, the same right it's not gonna change and thereafter i'm gonna do a test train split also in the same way right so this is also done so we we got uh, the data split available for us now what i'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the columns which we want to normalize, right? So select those columns which we wish to normalize. So remember, normalization or standardization, they are interchangeable term, but all of them is where we are trying to work on normalization. We want to work on a uh, data set not to be complex, more readable, more easier format for us. So let us create this train underscore normal. So what is going to be these uh, normal uh, columns for us? So I'm gonna take the X train and uh, let us uh, take these uh, first 10 columns. So zero column 10, right? Maybe column of 10. So zero to uh, nine, that is uh, first 10 columns in our data set, right? So if you see once again, these first one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? This is the data set which we are going to normalize. So the way you got uh, the training, same way we got the testing. Let's say test. The columns which we want to normalize, right? So X train and X test. So this is uh, what we got. So guys, can I get a smiley once from all of you? Are we uh, good to live so that we can proceed? All right. Now uh, my Next discussion is where I'm going to say from your sklearn dot. Or let me just give me just give me a moment. So here we'll uh, use a pre-processing technique. So just give me a moment, guys. So we're gonna use this sklearn pre-processing. So I'm not gonna apply this formula. You need to understand this part here. So I'm not gonna apply this standardization formula. So we'll be using this pre-processing uh, module from sklearn to implement the same. So how are you gonna uh, do this? So guys, there is uh, something known as standard scale. So standard scale uh, will say is equal to your pre-processing standard scalar. So this is uh, the API, right? And you even gonna say a dot fit function. So in the fit function, you wanna pass this train normal. Thereafter, you want to say your X train normalized data is your standard scale, and you just say a dot transform. 
so you're gonna transform your training uh, a normalized model right into your standard uh, standardization part in this manner right so first of all you get this api standard scalar and you give this uh, data right the train normal because your approach here is your si minus x bar over x so we need the data set right so we need all the features so fit over here is going to give this uh, uh, features the training normal features to a standard scalar and then we are going to have this normalized uh, part here so guys can i get a smiley from all of you are we good to hear I would like to get an acknowledgement from all of you guys in case you are finding any challenge can uh, please raise the query. So using standardization technique. So we are using standardization technique here and uh, this is how you got uh, the normalized uh, data right but uh, we are going to train using x underscore train right so we are not going to train uh, the model with this x train normalized value because this is going to be a numpy array for me so uh, this guy x train normal is a numpy array for me so i, I need to do some known as conversion of uh, numpy array to your uh, data frame So for this, what I'll do is I'm going to come here and say the next part. So we got this training normal column, normalized columns. So I'm saying normal, so guys, it is normalized, right? So I think I should be using this. Normalize, this is your train normalized. So I'm going to use, this is your test. So uh, the train uh, normalize here so that you should not be always uh, getting you know kind of confusion so i'm just using the right terminology so training uh, normalized column i'm gonna create a data set basically I'm, I'm gonna create a data frame basically right so this is going to be your pandas dot data frame so i'm gonna create a data frame so in this data frame so let us put this X train normalized. So I'm gonna put this X train normalized. I'm gonna create a data frame, and uh, I'm gonna say the index to choose is your training normalized dot index. So it should be the same index, right? Which is there in the training normalized. And one more thing is, so I'm gonna use the same columns. So the columns will also be the same, which is there in this training normalized. So this is uh, where we are trying to uh, somehow get your uh, train normalized uh, data set, which was basically X train normalized. So your X train normalized is going to follow all the features which this train normalized data set the first 10 columns they are it's gonna take the shape right so last is what i'm gonna say your last is your x train now this is your x train right so we are going to update this fellow so there's a function called update so some more of the api is coming up right so we gonna uh, use this training normalized column right so this is how we are able to do our normalization technique with respect to your uh, x train guys a smiley away from all of you if we are good to go
now this is something which we uh, did for your training data set right so same way uh, this training data set has to be taken care for testing as well so you have this test normalized right this is going to be your text test so just give me a moment X test normalized, test normalized, and the test normalized. So this is your test normalized columns and uh, testing normalized columns. All right. So now you can ask your queries in case you have guys. Right. So we have not our we have not written our own function to standardize the things here because you have a lot of records and uh, you'll be writing your own loops and doing the things uh, it's gonna take a lot of time to write the algorithm so rather than writing our own algorithm what we did we used the uh, sk learn pre-processing standardization technique so we are going to have this uh, standard scale and uh, this standard scale uh, we had it Okay, so I'll just need to come up and change this standard scale also. So once you have this standard scale, so you can, uh, so the way you have this train normalized, you will have this for test normalized, right? Because they are both the different data sets for us. So testing data set is normalized and uh, the training data set is normalized, but what you are doing is you are normalized only the first 10 columns. That is the reason that we had to do all this, uh, you know, uh, cre recreating of the data frame and uh, updating these uh, training and the testing columns. So let us now try to run the program and uh, see what's going to happen. Okay, I think uh, there is uh, some. Okay, so th these are just the warnings. Can you see the accuracy going up to 85% now? So in our previous program, right, this accuracy uh, had a max value of 68 or 70%. So now it is uh, going even up, right? So in my third epoch, right, the accuracy is uh, gone up to the max level, right, nearly 100%. So we uh, kind of achieved an accuracy uh, of 99% and the loss is heavily decreased. Can I get a smile from all of you guys? Did you understand the meaning of normalization on the data sets? I hope this is not a challenge to anyone. So this is uh, how we are going to actually, uh, you know, use this part of the discussion in a way that in case you are having data set and in case you're facing challenges with the accuracy where the values in the data set are something where they can be standardized. So you choose the columns, you standardize them and you achieve a better, more accuracy. 
as compared to your regular data set, right? So data pre-processing is always important for us. And uh, now what I'm gonna put is this something as SK learn K cross validation. So guys, uh, I would uh, like you guys to explore this API. Right, what is meant by this K fold? So it's a very uh, basic API. So I'll just put this over here. So explore API. K fold validation. Okay. So this is something which you guys need to explore. And yes, assignment is write the same data, same program with a different data set once again. Okay. So what is the discussion for tomorrow? Tomorrow we're gonna see how we are going to train an artificial neural network by creating it step by step with our own Python object oriented programming structure. There may be a case you would like to not use TensorFlow APIs and you would like to work on your own uh, mathematical model. So how you're going to do that? Okay. So this is a prerequisite. So you can just go ahead and study uh, this. What is model section dot K fold? So I try not to use any API tomorrow rather everything we do it by our own uh, logics, right? That that's what we do tomorrow. So tomorrow's class may be an extended class at the same time. So day after tomorrow, we are going to work on convolution neural networks. Guys, if you will see here, so uh, Kaggle is going to have some beautiful data sets. So one of my uh, programs is going to work on test X-ray images. Now you need to understand what this chest X-ray images uh, is all about, right? So we uh, have the data set available where the images represent the normal images. There is something known as bacterial pneumonia and viral pneumonia. So this is going to be uh, done with the convolutional neural network. So we're gonna use CNN technique. We're going to extract the uh, information from the images and then we're going to apply our techniques to finally come up and give us that what kind of class it is. So this is kind of working for the COVID uh, data sets, right? We'll try to extract some uh, information across the world. How the viral infections in the chest, they are listed for the coronavirus patients and we'll try to write a model. So uh, we're gonna work on writing our neural network tomorrow. We're gonna write our neural network from the scratch right till the end. Maybe we work on a data set which is more simpler or we'll use the uh, same data sets which we have been working earlier. So thereafter we're gonna work on convolutional neural networks or CNNs as in a short and we take up this case study how we can have the image classification on this chest x-rays, right? So uh, make sure that you are connected and uh, you come to the sessions regularly. So lockdown as of now is extended and I would uh, request all of you to please make the best utilization of the time. So this is going to be all for the day. So thank you so very much guys. I will push this code over the GitHub and I'm pushing this seeds.csv but I'm not pushing this uh, cover type.csv. Okay. So session number 57. ANN with normalization. And history. That's it. ANN with normalization, right? So. So I hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you so very much, guys. See you tomorrow. Any queries you can always ask. You can please also try to raise in the groups. Thank you, guys. Bye bye.